Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to the Adventure Incorporated Podcast. I am your Dungeon Master, Anthony Reed. This is episode 133, and the fifth episode of the Gorm story arc. Now we are getting into it. I think this is going to be a ton of fun. I hope you're very excited when this thing gets started. Uh, There's a lot more coming, so stay tuned. I just am so excited to unleash this to everyone. Make sure you tell us what you think on Facebook, Twitter, Discord. The Discord is a ton of fun. If you haven't joined it, I know not everyone uses Discord, but I highly recommend you give it a shot. It's like an ongoing chat room. There's a whole bunch of us in there, community members as well as cast members, and we talk about all kinds of things. It's it's just a lot of fun. It's a good community. So come and be a part of it. Join Discord. You can find the link in the show notes. Don't forget to give us a five-star review on iTunes or whatever service you use. Help spread the word about the show. We don't advertise anywhere, and it helps us keep growing. This episode is brought to you by Sean and patrons like them. If you want to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com slash adventureinc. Basically, if you get value out of this show, it's a little way to give value back to us. It lets us reinvest in the show and do new things and better things. Some of those things are coming down the line soon, so stay tuned. That's all this week. Let's get started. Nobles and farmers, knights and wenches, gather round, gather round to hear a tale of excitement and mystery. Brave adventurers facing grave dangers. Keth. The fighter monk. Guys, there, there, there are a lot of, there's a lot of puppy in this cloak. I, I, I just, I need, needed to say it. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Genevera, the sorcerer. Genevera, you're sitting there next to Clyde, who just goes, "What the fuck?" I like hold up my hand for a high five. <laughs> Gibetto, the rogue. As soon as they see the five of you, their expression. Hardens. Uh, well, we'll see you later. And Jibeto just turns. <laughs> <to later. laughs> Gillick, the paladin warlock. But, but you're dying again, right? Like, you die, then you get a spirit. And you're nothing. And then you become nothing. And then you're nothing. That sounds like bullshit. Let's go kill the Death Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and Asher, the druid barbarian. Yeah, but I'm asking specifically who, why Jeff is important to Asher. He just, it's just the first name. You know what? <laughs> I don't have to justify this. <laughs> Let us recall what happened when we last left our heroes. Who might you be? <laughs> I'm Gorm Tintreach. How do we know you're not the flipped Gorm? What do I do? What I do don't we do? know, because with each passing day, I feel more of him in me. I, I can... Am perform a ritual with each of to allow you to inhabit and embody these memories but i warn you this will be dangerous and it will be difficult and if you stray too far from what gorm did in these memories your mind will shatter the visions (laughs) begin Prepare yourselves, for this is the tale of Adventure Incorporated. You uh, open your eyes, Gebetto, and you are laying in a Spartan room. It is uh, just simple wood. Uh, The bed that you're in is sort of a simple, clean, white cloth uh, linens. On the back of the wooden door of this fairly small room... Uh, is a pair of uh, stark white robes. And that's it. The room is fairly empty. Okay. It's just you in this bed and these robes. Will you uh, remind me what Gorm's voice sounds like again? Um, <clears throat> he's just sort of like a little, a little deeper. A little deeper and gruffer. He's not... I mean, you better, you know... Jibetto's going to have a hard time emulating that, I feel like. Uh, I don't think you need to put on an affectation to your voice. for the. Well, what if I sound like this? Great. Perfect. Fine. Is this, that's, that's is wonderful. this Gorm? That's Gorm. Whenever no, you're speaking I mean, of that's Gorm, <laughs> that's what you can do. I love it. I it's don't want to do that because I'll lose it. <laughs> 
No. Uh, so Gebetto's going to... Gorm is going to... I suppose put on the robes, right? Like it's daytime. So you stand up and you feel like you. Like Gebetto? Yeah. But when I look down, it's... No, you see Gebetto below you. Like your body, you're in Gebetto's body. What? I thought... Huh. I guess I just kind of... Assume this would be different. Um, when I pick up the robes, are they like my size? Are they? Well, yeah. So hanging on the wall, they look like they'd be way too big for you. When you pick them up and like are holding them, they look like they would fit. And you, I think even if you like, you hang them back up, up on the wall and they still just look way too long. But then you like, you pick them up and they seem like they're going to fit. Okay. Um, huh. And I put on the robes. Yeah. Okay. You uh, you dress up in these uh, stark white robes. They're simple. Uh, there's not a lot of. Uh, they're they're just like simple cloth. Um, there's no like insignia. Nothing that like makes them fancy. They're just plain white cloth. Okay. Um, I assume it's daytime, right? Like. Yeah, there's a small window uh, up high in the room. I'm supposed to be awakening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and put on the robes. Uh, how do I, like, feel? Like, am I... Do I feel like I'm supposed to be doing something? Do I feel... You don't. Like... You actually, it's... You're starting to get a little nervous. Because I think, and I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but I think you're starting to get a little bit nervous. Because why would you think that? I'm asking a lot of questions and like <laughs> super uneasy. Uh, I'm playing. There it is. Cool. You're not getting any of that. You're not getting a feeling of where you should be. You're not getting. You know because of what this, what this, or your reality, Gorm's told Gorm told you that you need to sort of play it close to Gorm here, but. Uh, you don't know what that is and you uh, have no sort of indication what that is. How big is the room I'm in? Uh, probably like uh, six by six. Oh, shit. It's, okay. It's very small. Fuck. Uh, well, I really wanted to turn into a dragon. Um, <laughs> There's I won't a knock do that on the here. door. Uh, yes. Are you coming? And uh, I'm going to open the door and say, of course, I was just preparing myself. Uh, you see a man in a similar outfit to you. Uh, he is uh, sort of darker skinned, but he uh, has sort of a weathered face. Um, and he nods when he sees you and, and hears your explanation. And he says, we're meeting at the prayer hall. Now is the time. Very well. And I like gesture for him to to lead. Uh, he starts to, yeah, he steps out into the hallway uh, and you do as well. Immediately in front of you, as you step out into this hallway, which is lined with doors similar to yours. Um, just like it's a long, seems to be like a barracks of small rooms, uh, is Gorm. The Gorm that you were just speaking to. The one from your reality is standing in the hallway. Uh, this guy in front of you steps through Gorm and continues on. Uh, and Gorm says, oh, What is happening? What do you mean, what's happening? Um, I... What? I did not... This is not how this ritual is supposed to work. I... Something isn't right. Great. I'm super excited about that. Um, <clears throat> do I just keep pretending to be you? Uh, to be him, yes. I think you have to... It, 
clearly who that was that was Thorval uh, he's the leader of our he order he didn't think it was weird when uh, I came to the door so no he must see you as Gorm yeah okay cool great um okay and like uh Gibetto's gonna turn and be like well um you wanna come along <sighs> If I can help in whatever way I can, I will. Um, Excellent. But you uh, should probably hurry up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, Gibetto scurries ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, Gorm sort of follows along behind you, um, just sort of keeping pace with you. He's like, this place is familiar to me, but it's it's hard. I, I've never been here, but I'm feeling the memories from the other Gorm. As we're sort of viewing them, they are flooding into my mind. Yeah, I really thought uh, that would be what I felt uh, while I went through this. So did I. I don't know why I'm here. Well, but I'll help you however I can. But you have to stick through this. You have to do the things that Gorm did. I'm not seeing these images until after you do them. I can help you with context, hopefully, but I can't guide you directly. You're going to have to do this on your own. Great. Perfect. Um, this should be fun. Um, you... <laughs> uh, you follow Thorval uh, further down the hallway. Um... It twists a couple of times, uh, and it opens up into a large great hall area. Um, <clears throat> in this great hall, you see dozens of other people already sort of in uh, lines and rows. Uh, they are all wearing the same, like, simple white outfit. Um, and Thorval sort of... Am I, like, last to arrive? Is it clear where I'm supposed to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's perfect. like a hole, like there's like uh, a gap in between yeah, yeah. a couple of people. Pardon me, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Like and like everyone go. seems okay with it. They're not like mad at you, but but you can sense maybe just a little bit of like, come on, man, just like right. get here on time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like the whole time, you know, Gibetto knows he was with the teacher. He's fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, you take a spot next to a younger looking man, um, maybe uh, 16 or 17 um, on one side of you. And he says, uh, cutting it close, aren't you, Gorm? And he smiles wide. Uh, uh, Gorm's going to. What would Gorm do? Gorm's going to smile kindly uh, and say. Wait, should I use Gibetto voice for what Gorm says? Or, like, uh, I guess this is a question, Anthony, for you about the show. How would you rather? Uh, I think you can just use Gibetto voice. Right. Uh, if you if you haven't figured it out, this is yeah, Quantum yeah, yeah. Leap. <laughs> right. No, so. I've, I've got it. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you can just, uh, do Gibetto voice. That's Great. fine. Cool. Uh, will you give me that lead again then? Sure. Uh, the, yeah, the, the boy turns to you and he smiles. He says, cutting it a little close, aren't you Gorm? And he smiles really wide. You and I both know there's plenty of time for stuff like this. Uh, Gorm sort of like leans in. He says, that's Halath. He's your brother. Well, he's Gorm's brother and he sort of like looks at he's like i i had a brother there mm, this is very Wait. odd this reality is not anywhere close to ours great um the yeah, oh and uh out of game Am I able to respond to Gorm without? 
I don't think so. I think people Other would people. hear you if you were talking Great. to Gorm. So, <laughs> or if you were talking, Thorval, yeah. yeah, like as we're walking down the hallway, I'm muttering and Thorval is like <laughs> overhearing it. Great. Yeah, I mean, he was probably like a little ways. I don't think he expected you to stop uh, sure. when he walked through Gorm. So he was probably a little ways behind you anyway, or a little ways ahead of you anyway, that he probably didn't overhear you muttering to Gorm. Uh, but but yes, you will have to be somewhat careful about when you have open conversations with Gorm. <laughs> Perfect. That's, yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure. Uh... <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, Thorval sort of moves up to the front of the order, and uh, he uh, sort of stands in front of the whole group. Uh, Hilath turns and whispers to you, Are you nervous? Of course not, brother. I... I trust in the order. Um, he says, oh, stop. You'll be fine. You don't have to pull that shit with me. Uh, and uh, Gorm says, I don't know what's happening here. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thorval no, of stands. course not. <laughs> uh, I say, and I like, I, I look at, uh, <laughs> I look at Halath and Gorm at the same time, uh, kind of darting back and forth, you know? <laughs> Thorval uh, begins, he says, brothers and sisters, I am so honored to have us all meet again here today. Obviously, these are troubling times for us, dangerous times. And while our kind is being hunted, persecuted, you have come to me to find a solution. I believe I have found that solution. I believe we will be able to find a way to prosper, a way to move forward, to fight back against those who would hunt us. Sure, we can kill a raiding party or fight one-on-one, -on -one, but there is no way that we can stop the numbers that come for us. Too many of our brothers and sisters have died, generations slaughtered. No more. We must rise and do what we should have done a long time ago. All that remain in this room are all that is left of our family, of our kin. We must come together. There's like a murmur across the room, like of agreement. Everyone's sort of like there's there's like yeah, this of general buzz should. of yeah. energy. He says, "We will wake the sleeping one, our father who sleeps beneath the ground. They have kept us oppressed with his confinement, but we will not allow him to be confined." any longer the ritual for this begins today it will take time and they will come to slaughter us and it will be messy and that is why I need all of you to be here today to help to defend this to protect us and to give your energy to give your strength to waking our father If when we are now prepared, we are on the precipice of doing something that is centuries in the making. My ritual guard, come to me. You see seven people stand up from the, uh, around the room. Right. Um, and they start to move for, forward and Halath sort of elbows you. He's like, good luck, brother. You'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I stand up and, um, <clears throat> put a hand on Hellas shoulder and just give it like one squeeze. Uh, um, go ahead. No, what were you about to say? Gorm sort of, uh, like standing beside you. He's like, oh yes, this ritual, it, it focuses on the schools of magic. It's used to 
push magic down into the ground to try and and focus it on Herix. Right. Here we go. Um, Yeah, so the the seven others are pushing their way up toward the front. Um, (sighs) Great. Uh, Yeah, I also follow <laughs> so confidently <laughs> uh yeah okay you make your way up there um <clears throat> and he said the thorval sort of waits for all of you to sort of take your place up in front of uh the the whole congregation in a line uh and he says these are our champions ones who will carry forth our strength carry forth our message and awaken the slumbering one their power it may not be the greatest but their heart their spirit is what we are channeling here these faithful will carry our word for us and they will stop at nothing to make sure he awakens are you ready my champions uh Gibetto is gonna nod he's not gonna say anything he's just gonna nod okay yeah everyone else uh sort of nods um and then uh he sort of he nods back to all of you and he says then we head to the ritual grounds uh everyone sort of stands and uh starts to move toward the exits but uh thorval leads the eight of you out uh a door near the the front of the chamber where he is uh out into an open field Gibetto, you recognize this place as once you step outside as the compound of Maghamara. Okay. Great. Like, as soon as you get like an outside perspective on it, you know right where you are. Perfect. Um, and so Thorval leads uh, the eight of you out and there is already drawn on the ground sort of this uh image uh a space for each of you with a symbol a familiar symbol sure. one of each of the schools of magic uh and it is sort of yeah, marked so out hmm? i said yeah so i'm gonna try and find the uh school of divination like the symbol yep. of divination and head toward that yeah uh you make your way there it's a small circle that you can stand in marked with divination a larger circle around that and it is all encompassed by a series of lines drawing towards the other schools uh concentric circles around it and then of course there's a large like sort of symbol in the center a symbol for herix sure um and so there also uh, is a spot marked at sort of the top of this symbol uh, where Thorval takes his spot. Uh, and the other um, sort of ritualists take their positions as well. A large group sort of forms around everyone and starts like protecting. Um, there's no walls here like there is at, in Maghamara that you're familiar with, but it's definitely the same place. And they start to, to form sort of a wall uh, around the place to protect it sure um <clears throat> so let's see here okay um <clears throat> so next to you uh you see uh a like one of the other ritualists starts to sort of uh transform his white robes just sort of like become part of him as he stretches upward and transforms into a black dragon oh hell yeah 
Uh, Gebetto uh, takes that cue right away and starts turning into a fucking blue dragon. So you do this thing like... Uh, you don't really know how to do that? <laughs> sure I do. Uh, Gebetto, like... Uh, he centers himself and he he starts to think about uh, he starts to think about power and about um, like <clears throat> secret meanings and the the truth of the universe and and like he he tries to uh, almost visualize like the the coming together of all of those things in like a in the center of his being and like uh almost wills it to grow uh as like he visualizes this blue orb inside him roll a charisma s- a check at plus five okay uh fifth oh sorry 19 okay uh yeah you feel that you feel that sort of uh, strength, you feel that power, uh, and you push yourself, and you don't feel like anything happened. Like, you feel like you did it, but, like, you're still just Gibetto. Oh, what the fuck, Anthony? <laughs> I wanted to feel like a blue dragon. <laughs> now, you do feel like th- there are things that you... Uh, have harnessed within yourself now, right? Touching this part of yourself, sort of uh, releasing it, you feel like you could do things you couldn't do before. You, Gibetto, feel like you could fly. You sure. feel like you could shoot lightning. But you're still just Gibetto. We gotta keep trying. The other ritualists also transform um, a green dragon, a bronze dragon, a gold dragon, a uh, copper dragon, and a silver dragon. Sort of round out the, the spots around the, the arena here. Um, and then I assume Torval, they all, they all hmm? match up with the colors of the magics as well? Well, uh, yes and no. Um not really, because, uh, like, our, your enchantment being a gold dragon, like, a bronze dragon. Bronze is not the color of evocation. Red was the color of magic for the evocation. Okay. But uh, these are the dragon types that are linked to these uh, magics. Sure. Gebetto uh, a red, wants to a take red dragon a would also note. be linked. Uh, Gebetto wants to take a mental note of what all these dragons are. Okay. Uh, Genevera does also have uh, the list of dragons that sure. are tied to different things, but it's still good to take a note of which ones these ones were. Right. Oh, well, that's perfect. Gold should be transmutation and white should be enchantment. That makes sense. So there's also a white dragon there. <laughs> I fixed the problem. I just wish I knew where the white dragon went. It's in the transmutation spot. <laughs> Great. So this is actually better anyway, because that means that there were four chromatic dragons and four metallic dragons. So, uh, yeah, around you, um, you know, there's the black dragon, there's you, there's a green dragon, a white dragon, uh, a gold dragon, a bronze dragon, a copper dragon, and a silver dragon. Okay. So uh, among the eight of you, each of you has taken a spot on one of the schools of magic uh, and... There are four uh, chromatic and four metallic. And then Thorval has taken a spot sort of to uh, direct things. He also takes a draconic form. Uh, but he is a uh, brass dragon. So he, you know, um, well, actually you don't know. Gorm says uh, Thorval is also steeped in divination. He is strong with that magic as well. Oh, great. As a blue dragon, uh, you are tied to divination, but you are also particularly strong in evocation. A brass dragon's secondary is abjuration, so his power set is different than yours in that way. Uh, is really uncomfortable with the idea of, like, responding. Um, (laughs) Sure, sure. So he's just, like, he's just gonna... 
listen. <laughs> um, Thorval starts to make his way around uh, this ritual. Um, he starts talking to one of the other dragons. Uh, and indeed, like the other dragons seem to be sort of like closing their eyes and thinking and, and focusing on this ritual. Um, what are you sort of trying to, trying to do as this ritual begins? What am I trying to do? Yeah, like, like what are you doing as you stand in this circle? Are you just like awkwardly shuffling? Are you trying to sort of focus on anything? Are you trying to... Oh, yeah. To... Um, Gebetto is trying to figure out how a dragon channels its energy into the ground. Mm. Uh, so he's like lifting his heels and like like rocking, like alternating on his feet between the heels and the balls of his feet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Not like at the same time, but like opposite each other so that he's trying to, he's trying to like feel the earth. You know what I mean? And like really like physically ground himself Um, (laughs) at the same time. It's like uh, Steph and I went to this crystal shop and the lady in the crystal shop had us like hold all these uh different colored rocks and like apparently they all relate to like different chakras in your body uh so (laughs) javetto is going to be kind of thinking about uh his celestial being and trying to focus all his energy toward like his base okay (laughs) sure sure uh gorm says "Uh, hang on and he like runs over toward where Thorval is like talking to one of the other dragons. Um, and he comes back and he's like, he's asking him a bunch of questions about necromancy. Great. Uh, get ready. <laughs> uh, Thorval makes his way. Uh, like he seems satisfied with the, the necromancy answers and uh, he makes his way uh, over to you. Anthony, you dropped the ball on a necromancer. What do you mean? (laughs) (laughs) I'm so disappointed. Me too. (laughs) Oh, boy. So good. It was right there. It was right there. Fuck. (laughs) Fuck. I don't even... I'm I'm not even going to edit it. I'm so just disappointed. (laughs) No, just go back and change it. Uh no no you Use called me out you voice. got me fair and squ- Use your <laughs> <laughs> uh okay and then in the stinger we can just have this conversation <laughs> so uh he steps up to you and he says Gorm Tintrich are you prepared of course. <laughs> he says uh, also he doesn't seem to react any differently to that than any other time you've spoken <laughs> with him uh, he says speak to me of your connection to divination uh Gibetto's going to whisper to him. Um, the connection to divination that I have exists in all times and places. Exists as a core truth of reality given to me from the father of all. When you look upon our chances here, the future that we face, when you look upon our plight, what do you see? 
possibility. In many forms. And in eventual success. The gift that you have been given by the Father. One, the strength of sight, a sight beyond. How would you treat one who abused this gift? One who squandered their power? Uh, Gebetto opens his mouth and focuses hate into the center of the circle. Um, trying to call out that, like, dragon lightning breath. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I think there's, like, this crack in the air, right? And a blast of lightning just fires off into the sky. Um, and uh, you feel some of, like you feel almost a draining of yourself in a way uh, as it pours down into the ground around you. Uh, and you see sort of the area around you begin to glow slightly. There's a small smirk on Torval's face. He says, Gorwa, you have always been like a son to me. You are powerful beyond what the others know. You are strong, and I appreciate what you are doing here for this. I know that you will not fail. You will see this through. And he sort of nods to you, and he steps away. <clears throat> and Gorm says, "This, this ritual. There's something to it. It's, it's pulling from you." It's drawing your energy. Each of these around us, those who are tied to divination, are sharing their energy with you as well. But, but it draws most from those who are part of the ritual. Um, he's sort of like, like, there's nobody like that close to you. So if you wanted to talk back to Gorm, you could whisper. And I don't think anyone would uh, like even some of the other people are like whispering prayers on their own. Uh, okay, so sure. You wouldn't be that weird to be whispering. Uh, cool. Uh, Gibetto is going to respond then. He's going to say, um, I, I just assume this is. You know how how power is delivered to Herrix from this in in this Gorm's world, the same way that he's using the machines in our world. Perhaps that is why he is using the machines in our world. He cannot find enough power from a congregation. If he cannot convince the dragons of our world to do this, which, to my knowledge, he has not even tried. Perhaps there's an opportunity to convince the dragons to stop him. I do not believe that my brothers and sisters could do such a thing without the bonds of the pact being lifted. Why not? The pact prevents us from interfering just as it does all angels. And if someone violates that pact, 
like Gorm is doing. He sort of looks around. He says, from what I can tell, Gorm is not subject. This Gorm is not subject to a pact. There is no pact here. Right, but there is a pact where we're from. And if he's there, shouldn't he have to abide by those rules? The pact is not like your laws. They are not an agreement. They cannot be violated by our nature. They bind us. He is not affected by that. Do you guys have, like, dragon internal affairs? Or <laughs> anything? <laughs> like, you know, uh, any sort of... If you could remove the pact, perhaps the dragons would turn against him. Oh, sure, yeah, no, I've seen what happens when you remove the pact. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you a thing or two about a thing or two. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, I don't think the dragons can be a tool in this. Not directly. What if we find your brother? As far as I know, my brother, that is... He doesn't exist. I've never known of this creature. Cool. I am getting memories of him now from this place. He seems he like and, a good guy. He and Gorm are close. They grew up together. They are they are brothers of as we are all all dragons brothers not got it of the same parents but but they are close they are as close as any do you have memories now of uh the bond between them like is there any sort of wedge that we can use Perhaps if we knew more about Halath, we could... The, if there is a Halath in our world, or there is something we could use... All I can tell you now is that there are two things that this Gorm cares about. Halath and the Sleeping One. He feels a bond. A bond, I admit, that I have felt as well to our own Herix. He is connected in a way that others are not. It is why he volunteered for the role that you are filling now. Yeah. Yeah. What else is happening around us? Yeah, it is about that time you start to hear the sounds of fighting behind you. Charging up over the hills are a full army. Like, not one battalion, many. Uh, hundreds of thousands of soldiers marching their way up the hill. It is humans, it is orcs, it is uh, dwarves and elves and uh, gnomes. It is all of the greater races are marching their way toward this hill to fight the dragons, to keep this from occurring. Okay. Um, Jabetta wants to take a mental note of exactly where, like, this is. I know you said it's in the compound, but, like, is it... It's, like, it's, like, the, that main quad between, like, right in front of the tower, like, where if, 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 uh, the, their compound would be right where the tower is, and then you'd have the master's, uh, area to the left, and, like, the barracks to the right, and then right here in the center where, like, the gate would be surrounding it like it is right okay. in the middle of the quad area uh where adventure incorporated is okay cool um great uh just because it's clearly a place of power uh so jibetta wants to not lose that uh in a way this fight almost reminds you of when the undead were uh marching on makamara because it's sure. very similar it is armies marching forward uh, and this place being defended. 
Um... Many of the dragons have taken flight. They're starting to charge down to defend. Um, and already you can hear this, like the sounds of battle behind you. Sure. Uh, yeah, I want to... Uh, hold, please. Uh... I want to cast Detect Thoughts on Thorval. Okay. Um, so with Detect Thoughts, he can tell that you're detecting his thoughts? Uh, let's see. As an action, if I... Uh, if I probe deeper into the same creature's mind other than surface level, uh, then yes. Okay. So on the surface, you are getting thoughts like, yes, mm, yes, good, excellent. This is, this will work well. Transmutation is complete. And he moves on to like the next person and you hear him start to think like, um... How I should ask about enchantment, and then you see him sort of start to ask a question to the guy. Okay. And, like, so, so he's, he's not—he's not reacting worriedly to the. Uh... No, he anticipated it. Okay. He knew the battle was coming. Okay. Cool. That's fine then. Uh, then I'll stay where I'm at. Uh, but part of me really feels pulled uh, to go kill these people. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, a few more minutes pass. You watch as uh, he sort of makes the rounds to everybody. Um, everyone's symbols have started to glow, like, a little bit. Um, and uh, Torval, uh, uh, Thorval takes his spot and uh, begins to focus on the, uh, the ritual in his own right. Um, and you see him transform as well. Uh, into like full dragon form sure um, Gorm sort of is he's standing next to you but he's like watching the battle over your shoulder pretty much um, he says oh this is not good he says this place is so different than ours in this place when Herrick started to show signs of sickness. Just in our, as in our world, the Fae put him to sleep. But then the Fae and the races here, they turned on the Celestials, blamed them for what had happened. They slaughtered them all. They killed the gods. What was left were the dragons, and they subjugated them. They turned them into slaves. This is all that is left of these people. This, this is the rebellion. And they are about to be smout. It's odd. The, the anger that I feel for this, it is not mine, but, but it is strong. Hmm. They are breaking the lines. Do you feel the strength waning? There has to be fewer now than there were. Lending their power. And you hear like the sounds of like, the battle is getting louder, it's getting closer, It's you hear screaming, things are definitely not going how uh, you might have hoped. Sure. But still, uh, Thorval... Holds his spot. 
Gorm follows suit. After a few more minutes of screaming, the the sounds getting closer and closer, you can now uh, sort of feel that the battle has tightened up, that, that the, the circle has closed in around you guys as the, the dragons fight to sort of uh, hold ground. And you hear a voice. Helath. And he says, Gorm, help! How close does Gorm feel, or Gibetto feel, or how close do I feel uh, to <laughs> the ritual... Um, being complete or being ready. It's hard to say. Um, the glowing has grown brighter on everybody. Uh, many of the lines have started to move toward the center, but it's not there yet. You feel weakened. You feel like you've your energy is still being sapped away, sucked down into the ground. Uh, but it's. You're, it's not gone yet and nor is this ritual complete uh uh <sighs> Gibetto wants to turn and help um Gibetto knows Gorm is going to push through that uh uh, yeah, so Gibetto doesn't move, uh, but he does force or like try to force more energy into this than he has so far. Like, I don't know, he like tries to clear his mind. He like tries to tries to focus harder. Make a constitution check at plus eight. Twenty. Okay. Uh, yeah, you start to sort of push down and also make a charisma check for me again, plus five. Ooh. Uh, six. <laughs> uh, you don't feel like you're getting too much more out of it by <laughs> focusing on the ground, but you also don't feel like you passed out either. The, you, you're protecting yourself <laughs> enough uh, that you're not throwing your whole, like, literally everything you are into the ground right now. Sure. Uh, but you don't really feel like you got any more throughput. Okay. You can see over the back of the dragon uh, directly in front of you, which is probably like the uh, silver dragon. Over his head, you can see that people, they've, the armies have completely surrounded you guys. Um, sure. and our, st the line is now like pulling in close and it w will not be long that it will hold. Uh, I assume that they are too far to breath weapon at them. Yeah. 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 Um, just a little bit. Uh, okay. I'm probably by the time they were too close, it would not be good. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, you hear Thorval's voice sort of ring out over the, uh, the din. He says, Focus your minds. Push yourselves further. We cannot fail at this ritual. It is our only chance. Gorm, help please, Gorm! Uh, Gibetto turns to where the sound is coming, uh, and he says, I am, no shut up! Uh, you turn and as you see, uh, Hilath is a green dragon. Um, he is badly cut and wounded. Um, he is sort of on the edge of the lines fighting to try and stay behind people as he fires off blasts. And when you yell this to him, you just see like his heart break. Um, the lines on the other side break as well. And in come a flood of an army charging toward the ritual. They climb up onto the silver dragon across from you. 
and in his weakened state, energy pouring into the ground, they slit his throat. They pound him with hammers, axes, swords, arrows pelt into him, and within seconds, he drops to the ground dead. The ritual falls apart, energy suddenly empty from the ground. And um, no amount Gorm, of willing you have does anything. Gorm is trying to now, immediately seeing this, uh, tries to will the energy the other way. Like, I don't know. Uh, basically, he wants to use all of this collected potential energy to, to just punch a hole and get out of there. Okay. Make a make a charisma check for me at plus five. 21. Okay. You sort of gather up some of that energy, the last, any bit that you can, anything that you're being gifted by the dragons who are still awake or, or alive and around, um, and you push that energy forward into trying to like, like create a way to escape. And you start to see a bright blue light as it starts to slowly open a hole in front of you. As soon as it's the size of a head, uh, like, Gibetto's going for it. And it, it do, it's not quite big enough yet. It's not, not there. And then Thorval steps up beside you. And he says, We cannot let this end here. I said we would not give up. And he joins you in opening the gap wider and wider and wider. The gap opens just large enough and Thorval says, Come! And he charges forward and Gorm is standing there looking back. He says, You have to grab him. Geppetto, you have to grab him. My brother. Geppetto punches through the hole. He doesn't... Right. He doesn't look back. That's fine. Gibetto charges forward and jumps into the portal ne that Thorval went through. Instantly, there's this twisting, this this wrenching, this gr like grinding. You feel yourself squeezed and pulled, and then you're in these tunnels of blue energy. All around you, the energy whizzes by faster and faster, and you see Thorval. He's almost falling through this space, and you are falling behind him, and your eyes go dark hey adventurers dm anthony here again i just want to remind you that there are lots of ways to support the show Head on over to patreon.com slash adventure inc. Tell your friends about the show. Rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Links and more can be found at adventureinc.podbean.com. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next week. Alright, you ready? Yeah. This will be fine. You're fine. <laughs> I just, just don't want to fuck it all up. If you fuck it up, Gibetto dies. Well, big whoop. You're right. And maybe everyone else. <laughs> Shit.